Welcome to August Lico Challenge. This problem is called Patching Array. Given a sorted integer array nums and an integer n, add slash patch elements to the array such that any number in the range 1 to n inclusive can be formed by the sum of some elements in the array. Return the minimum number of patches required. Okay, so if we're given an array of 1 and 3 and an n of 6, what are the numbers that we can form with 1 and 3? We can see that all the numbers we can form are 1, 3, and 4. So we're going to be missing quite a few here. We're missing 2, 5, and 6. So if we just add 2, then we can see we can form everything. 1, 2, 3, one, all these, and it's going to form 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So uh, we kind of can see here that we probably want to do some sort of greedy method, given that the integer array number um, is sorted. And whenever we're missing some number that we can't form, we're going to have to add that number no matter what, right? If you see like 1, 3, 4 is possible, well, we have to add 2. Right, like adding five doesn't make any sense here. We have to add two and then perhaps build up, like see, okay, we have to add two. What else do we need in order to get all the numbers from one to six? Um, so to do this, let's just think of an example here. Say that we're given n of 10 and an array of like one, two, and I don't know, five, right? Now, rather than thinking of all the different combinations that we can form, which was my first approach, that, that definitely didn't work. Uh, what we can do is kind of think of this as a range instead. Like before we add any numbers, our range is going to be zero to zero, right? We have no numbers, so we can't do anything. Uh, but once we add one to our array, as we can see that we're going to have at least uh, zero to one, right? What if we add two? Well, interestingly enough, like if we add two, uh, we can kind of accumulate the sum that we formed so far and add two to our ending range here. And what this means is actually we can take care of one, two, and three uh, as we add this, add these numbers. And we can see like, yeah, one, two, and three at this point are all taken care of. So what about when we add five? Well, here's the issue. If we add five and this becomes eight, we can't form four, right? Like the condition that we need to ha have here is, okay, given this range, the next number that we add needs to be less than or equal to this number plus one. Like if this if, if this was a four, then it'd be fine. We can add this in here, but this five is greater than three plus one. So that actually means that we can't form a four. Like it doesn't matter what numbers come after this. There's no way we can form a four here. So we're going to have to add four here. Um, we don't technically need to add four to anything like inside of our array, all we need to do is just increase our output by one. And we know that the next number is four, so we can just add that here. So three plus four is gonna equal seven. Okay, and now when we check for five, we see that five is less than seven plus one. So then we can just add 12 here, or I'm sorry, five to seven, that's gonna equal 12. And now we've reached our 10. So all the numbers at this point, as long as we added a four, we can form everything from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And you can um, just verify that on your own. It's kind of unintuitive. It's it's very amazing that that works. And I think it's really hard to come up with. But uh, once we understand that, I think this algorithm becomes pretty easy. So let's begin by first initializing a couple of things. We'll have, not index, we'll call it i. Um, we're going to call this our output. And we're going to have our ending range. So I'm going to call that up to. Uh, you can call it reach, you can call it whatever you want, you can call it end. All right, so while, let's see, while our up to is less than the n, because that's what we need to take care of, we need to take care of all the numbers from 1 to n here. We'll say if our i is less than length of nums, and actually I can initialize that here. Let's try not to get that confused with the n given to us. And uh, let's see if the up to uh, plus one, whatever the number coming next has to be less or equal to up to plus one. Okay, and as long as that's the case, then we could add nums i to our up to, and we're going to accumulate this right like this. And we're going to increase our i right here. Now, otherwise, if this isn't the case, then we know we have to add a number. We have to add that next number, like that 4 that comes up. So uh, 
let's see, our output needs to be increased by one. And our up to is essentially whatever comes next, like up to plus one, like this, right? And finally, we just return our output. And this actually guarantees that we'll return the minimum because we're doing this in sorted order. So as we build it up, that's actually gonna, it's kind of guaranteed that it'll be the minimum number here. All right, so let's make sure this works. It looks like it, so. And there we go. So time complexity is gonna be O of N. Uh, it's the greedy method. But this is a hard problem. It, it uh, answer seems very easy, but coming up with this, I mean, I wasn't able to do it. I went down a completely different path. And it's only not until I saw the answer that, you know, it was kind of blew me away. So, you know, I think I need to really figure out how to take other problems, such as like interval problems and incorporate with problems that don't seem related. And I suppose that's why I keep doing these videos and why I keep practicing. And hopefully I'll get there someday. All right. Thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.